there are times during this season that can be sad, that can bring a blues, uh, a, a difficulty. And uh, we have in this Christmas season a, a real um, opportunity to make it a joyful, grateful response to God's gift. And by the way, I don't know if you know it or not, but I bounce back and forth between Advent and the Christmas season. And the reason is because the Advent tradition in the church, well, it's a long ago tradition. But what it really was is you had all the preparation up to Christmas. And then it was the 12 days of Christmas. So you didn't get a present, you didn't decorate, you didn't do anything until Christmas. And remember that song, 12 Days of Christmas, the partridge in the pear tree, sure, and then all the different gifts. Well, I blend them because that's how we really do it in our culture today. We, we prepare, and, and sometimes a little too early, I know. It's not early enough for me. I'm just one of those people that love everything about Christmas. But not everybody loves everything about Christmas. And so during this Advent season, we're using the book that Matt Rowell has written called The Redemption of Scrooge. And what Matt does is he looks back to a book that was written in the 1800s by Charles Dickens. And he says, Scrooge is a caricature of what Christmas is not to be. And what amazes me is how fascinating our culture, even today, is, is fascinated with Scrooge. The book was written. Another book was written in 1957, How the Grinch Stole Christ Christmas. Dr. Seuss taking the same idea about a, just a an horrible, no good person. And of course, his was a cartoon character. And how the Grinch comes in and steals all the presents of Hoosville, and they're still happy. And then he works that around to how it changed his heart, too. But think about it now. We got McDuck Scrooge. We've got Broadway Scrooge, Jim Carrey played the Scrooge. We've got the Grinch movies now being presented, not one, but two. Our culture is receptive to this idea that not everyone loves Christmas. In fact, we've had the culture wars, they were called, when people didn't want to say the words Merry Christmas. And Christians would stand up and say, keep Christ in Christmas. Well, the story of the redemption of Scrooge helps us look to how we should respond to people who don't like Christmas. They may have that heart like Scrooge, but they may have a different reason. They may have been hurt during the time. They may have lost someone. And each time it comes around Christmas, it brings out that pain. It may have been that they were in a church and they did something wrong and everybody fussed at them and so out they went. And so Christmas went out as well. Maybe a burden because of the commercialization that Kenny was referring to that somebody said to me the other day, all the kids' presents are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and bigger and bigger and bigger in price. And I can't keep up. I feel guilty. Talk about keeping up with the Joneses. Kids in my kids' class get presents I can't afford. They don't look forward to Christmas. There's one who did look forward to Christmas, and that was Mary. Take your bulletins as we'll read together Luke chapter 1. Luke 
Mary sings, my soul lifts up the Lord. My spirit celebrates God, my liberator. For through, for though I'm God's humble servant, God has noticed me. Now and forever, I will be considered blessed by all generations. She's even thinking about us. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is God's name. From generation to generation, God's loving kindness endures for those who revere him. God's arm has accomplished accomplished mighty deeds the proud in mind and heart God has sent away in disarray the rulers from their high positions of power God has brought down low and those who were humble and lowly God has elevated with dignity that last phrase I think refers to individuals who are broken and s those who are included in that list who, who just feel that wince about Christmas. Next slide, please. The Christmas story is a powerful story. It's before us in the nativity scene. I, I was in a store the other day, and I saw an uh, advent calendar for children, and it was it was one of those big block ones, and I thought, oh, how neat. And I began to look at it, and there wasn't one item from the nativity scene. It was just, just fun for kids, and yet they called it Advent. But they didn't want anything holy. They didn't want anything about the, the true story of Christ. It was for a family who, they don't do that kind of thing. And so I thought, well, that's, that's odd. But then I thought, you know, that might be a good gift for a family that doesn't do Christmas and then can open conversation with them where you can share the love of Christ with them. The Christmas story is a powerful story. It's God's grace and blessing for all of us. Next slide, please. Scrooge worshipped money. That's the way the story went. You probably know the story about how he and his partner Molly, Marley was focused on money. Marley died seven years earlier. And Marley's the one that comes back as a ghost. Marley torments Scrooge. Scrooge is secure in counting his money, and he keeps it away from everyone except he gives it every Christmas to the prisons because he wants to make sure those dirty sinners stay there. His heart is dark. His, his, his mind is focused on himself. And the interesting thing is, the story is told long ago, and Scrooge is redeemed. Scrooge's life is transformed. Scrooge is changed, but we still remember him in his old ways. I wonder, why? Why do we remember the bad things about him and not the good? Maybe it's because it's locked in that story, but maybe it's also because redemption's not too important to us in our world anymore. In fact, the word redemption is not in the Grinch, how the Grinch sold Christmas. We, we, we water things down. We, we push them away. We, we don't really see the work of Christ in a person's life changing that life or transforming it. Matt Rao tells the, the story of Mary singing the song to the lowly. And it echoes the story that Jesus told about the parable of the vineyard. 
the way the parable goes, it, and often the parable is a, it's, it's hard to get past. It, it's one of those parables where you go, hey, wait a minute, what? Because Jesus says that uh, this landowner comes and, and invites people to come to work. And so they say, okay, and he says, I'll pay you a day's wage. And then in the middle of the day, he goes and finds another group, and he says, you come and work too. I'll pay you a day's wage. And then way late in the day, he finds another group, and he says, you come, and I'll pay you also. And at the end of the day, when the landowner's paying out the money, he pays everybody the same. And the first group says, hey, wait a minute. That's not fair. We worked far longer than these last people worked. And what the story is showing us is that God's economy is different than the world's economy. Those who hear God's message, those who are in darkness and the light is turned on, later in life are given the same grace that those who receive it as young children. I, I praise God that I was raised in a Christian home, and, and I don't remember a time when I didn't know God loved me. But I know people who never understood God's love until late in life. And what Jesus is teaching us is that God's grace and blessings are for all of us, even those who don't deserve it because we all don't deserve it. What amazes me is that grace is amazing when it's for me. But when I think about it for someone else, do they really deserve it? No, they don't deserve it, just like I didn't. You see, that's the thing about grace. Grace is free for all of us. You say, not for, why I would never do. You see, the world points out the Scrooges, the, the sinners, those who are different from us. And it's Christ who, when he came, points out God's grace is free for all. Next slide, please. If Scrooge can be redeemed, we can be redeemed. Everyone can be redeemed. We can't earn God's grace. It's a free gift. And we're to be people who share that gift. You see, the parable that Jesus was teaching was a parable to teach. It wasn't the wage. It wasn't wealth that was given. It was the work that God gives. God's invitation isn't come to Christ so you'll be the richest in the world. The invitation is to come to Christ so you can participate in the work that God is doing in the world. That's why Mary is singing this song. The Lord has blessed me, she said. In other words, she's, she's praising God that she participates in the work of the Lord. Mary, did you know? You're kissing the face of God. Oh, Mary knows. She's the lowly and she's the lifted up one. She's the one who said God brings down the haughty and the mighty only to rise them up again, to receive them to themselves. God wants us to value and love what he loves and values. He loves the sinner. He values the Scrooge. He cares about the one who is brokenhearted, and he invites us to participate in that ministry to share the gospel of God's grace with them so that they would love Christmas, so that they would be transformed. Because transformation begins within the heart. Transformation changes the way that we see things, that brings us a hope, gives us a future. We thank God that Jesus came as a child years ago. We thank God God is present with us now we look forward to Christ coming again 
and we share that message with others so that they too can be redeemed. Share the gift of God's law, love. Pray with me. Lord, as we come to your table this morning, open our eyes that we would see Jesus and his love, not just for us, but for others. For that person that just, we look at them and we have that same attitude of, they're just a Scrooge. Give us grace, Lord, that we can share your grace with them. Open their hearts that they might love Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for communion, as we come, this is doing it in the remembrance of Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The risen Christ is with us now. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Now pray silently. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. All things come from you, O God, and with praise and thanksgiving, we return to you what is yours. You created all that is, and with love formed us in your image. When our love failed, your love remained faithful. You gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior, that we might have abundant and eternal life. All that we are and all that we have is a trust from you. And so in gratitude for all that you have done we offer ourselves and all that we have in union with Christ's offering for us. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>